so for another example, let's fast forward five decades. I want to talk a little bit about the work that our group does, which is simulating heart attacks. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the heart. So here's a 3D picture of your heart. And the heart contracts, and it contracts in a wave to shoot the blood either to the lungs or to the rest of the body. And the contraction happens in a wave. And the contraction happens because there's a previous wave of electrical activation of the cells. That's what you pick up on an electrocardiogram. And so the electrocardiogram is picking up the electrical activity. That's a voltage reading. And the conduction of the electrical impulse in the heart, the wave of electrical activation that creates the wave of contraction, is a wave that passes from cell to cell. Each cell has a voltage and it has currents, and it has sodium ions, and it has potassium ions, and all of that stuff. And there's a big differential equation that says that the change of voltage is a function of sodium and potassium, and the calculation, the co concentrations of sodium and potassium are in turn functions of voltage. And there's just a big differential equation that governs each cell. And then we take that cell and we multiply it by around 2 million to make 2 million grid points that make the solid heart. And then we use Euler's method to calculate what happens when an impulse comes down and the heart goes through a wave of electrical activation and therefore a wave of contraction. But what we're going to focus on here is the wave of electrical activation. Because in the normal heart, as you'll see in a minute, in the normal heart, it moves as a uniform rectilinear wave up the heart, which squeezes the blood in a nice uniform manner. But what we're interested in is understanding the circumstances that lead to the condition called VF, which stands for ventricular fibrillation. And this is sudden cardiac death. This is the scene in, in ER when they yell clear and they shock the patient with the paddles. Um, this frenzied and irregular contraction is what happens in ventricular fibrillation. And the nice uniform wave gives way to a completely disordered contraction. And that's what we want to understand the causes of. So we make this model. It has roughly 25 variables per cell times 2 million cells. That's a 50 million variable differential equation. But with modern computation, that's not a problem. And we can do it. And here's the result. So let's take a look at our simulation of what happens in ventricular fibrillation. We're showing you here a movie of, that's a result of our computations in this 50 million variable differential equation. And on top, we're showing you the whole heart. And then below, we're showing you six different leads of the electrocardiogram. So we start out with a normal beat. It activates the whole heart, and then it recovers from that beat, nice and blue again. Here's a second beat. And if you follow the bouncing ball, you're about to see a bad beat. And there is the bad beat. And the bad beat now creates multiple waves. And the question, how did that bad beat happen? And what is a bad beat? 
is an excellent question, and that's what we do research on. But now what you see is this disordered and frenzied, chaotic wave conduction has now taken over the heart. You see waves of excitation happening every which way. Uh, unfortunately, this is a stable, this crazy situation is stable, and your heart will not come out of VF until it is given a powerful electrical stimulus like the paddles of the defibrillator. And what we're doing is using this modeling to try to figure out is there a less invasive, is there a less barbaric way of converting VF into normal rhythm that's less barbaric than a huge electrical shock on the chest. And as a matter of fact, we have found uh, the mechanism of action of a drug, and we're now currently developing drugs that can prevent that condition from happening at a much, much lower level of invasiveness and at a much lower cost. And it's based upon understanding the mechanisms which we understand through this computer simulation.